Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavanda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama. You know I'd like to share the screen Who's the host? As far as I made you the host, you can directly share the screen. Huh? As far as I directly made you the host, I don't want to be the host. The I don't know how to use it. I haven't done it before. Hare Krishna Mahara. Yeah. Somebody else has to be the host. But I need to share the screen. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah. Uh, Maharaj, actually, uh, I made you the host. You can directly share the screen, Maharaj. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, how many devotees are here tonight? Uh, Maharaj, five devotees, uh, four devotees joined so far. Devotees are joining. So, we can start with the class. Okay. Now, uh, this this will be the last class in this unit, so we want to try to cover two chapters tonight. Okay. Because we're supposed to finish one unit in five classes. So according to the schedule, I'm supposed to do two chapters tonight. It will be 12 and 13. And then do you have a test after the, this, or do you, can, we, can we go on to the next unit? Are you supposed to have a test tomorrow? Who's coordinating this unit? Where is he? He's not online. But uh, we have not... And we don't have any communication regarding test tomorrow. Okay, so we'll go on tomorrow with another class. We'll just keep going. If he hasn't communicated anything, certainly we can't afford to miss a day. I don't have time. I, we have to do the class tomorrow. So we'll have class on, we'll keep going to the next unit. But this, this unit finishes with these two chapters, chapters 12 and 13. Okay? And then we'll go on 14, we'll hear about Chitra Ketu. All right? So we, we heard in the last class, last week, we heard about the wonderful transcendental qualities of Vritasura. Right? What was his, what quality, what was the, what, what were these wonderful qualities? Which quality did you fi find was very inspiring in him? He was not disturbed. Not disturbed? By what? Yeah. By his prayers, he was praying four verses of there to the Lord, we were praying. Sorry, I, I couldn't understand what you said. <coughs> He was uh, praying to the Lord. Like that. What was he praying for? He was praying. He was praying to be uh, to go to his abode, Lord's abode. Okay. Anything else? And even if Indra was uh, um, prepared to kill him, but uh, he was inviting him to kill him by using thunderbolt. He was not afraid of death. He wasn't afraid of death, right? Yeah. Yes. 
all of his other demon friends, they'd run away from the battle. When they yeah. saw that they were not able to defeat the demigods, they'd all run away. So Vritasura was surprised. He thought they were supposed to be Kshatriyas, but they were cowardly. And what happened to Vritasura? It will be discussed today, but I think Indra finally killed Brutasura. No, but up in the last chapter, we had chapter 11. 11. What had happened? 11. Parikit Maharaj was surprised how uh, he was uh, praying to the Lord in the, in the battlefield. Can somebody else tell me what happened to Vritasura in the course of the fight? Yeah, he got disassembled, he lost his hands, and he was still continuing to fight. And he was, even though he knew that he's a devotee, he was still pretending to be a demon. That is interesting, because he was so enlightened and Krishna conscious, but still he acted as a demon. He took his job very serious and fought against Indra, which was a reaction also of, to Indra's misbehavior. So he saw it probably... I could say as, as his mission, he knew, okay, I'm a devotee, but still my job is now to be the reaction of uh, Indra's misdeeds, and he fought. Yeah, now Indra, he, he, Indra had cut off one of his arms. He cut off one of the arms of Vritasura with his thunderbolt, right? When Vritasura had thrown a we some weapon at Indra, Indra cut the weapon to pieces and at the same time he cut off one of his arms. But Vritasura was not disturbed, although he lost an arm. And he's, instead he's, pre he's talking to Indra. He's talking to Indra about, his, well, first of all what happened was Indra had dropped the thunderbolt. but. Vritasura waited, he told him, pick it up, it's okay, he said, pick it up. Indra was feeling that he was defeated because it, uh, Vritasura had knocked the thunderbolt out of his hands. But Vritasura instead told Indra, oh, it's okay, pick up your thunderbolt, pick up your thunderbolt and use it, you can use it to kill me. So Vritasura didn't want to take any advantage over Indra at all. In fact, he, was, he wanted Indra to use his thunderbolt weapon to kill him. And so, uh, Vritasura was uh, so detached about the life and the death situation that he was just encouraging Indra that you definitely, he was telling Indra, you definitely have the right weapon, you can kill me. Go ahead, use it, throw your thunderbolt. Like this, he was encouraging Indra. Indra, of course, was not feeling so much inclined to do anything like that. But, anyway, we'll go ahead and let's look at what happens here in chapter 12. So, Vritasura considered death in the battle, preferable to victory. Uh, why would he think like that? Why would he think death is better than victory? You, yeah, one reason would be what? Well, you explained he could, that he could go back to Godhead, right? That he wants to go back to Godhead. So by being killed, he'll be able to get out of his demon body. But that's another reason to want to be killed, because he's in the body of such a demon. So he wants to give up that body, and at the same time he knows that when he gives up that body, he's going to go back to Godhead. So he's eager to die. And Sukadev Goswami continues in the first verse, he vigorously took up his trident and with great force attacked Lord Indra, the King of Heaven, just as Kastuba, 
or Kataba, Kaitaba, just as Kaitaba had forcibly attacked the Supreme Personality of Godhead when the universe was inundated. So we're given an example that how the demons sometimes attack the Lord. So it's compared like that, that Vritasura picked up its trident and it comes to attack Indra. And then Vritasura, the great hero, he whirls his trident which had points like the flames of a blazing fire at the end of the millennium. And he threw it at Indra, roaring, O oh, sinful one, thus shall I kill you. And so although Vritasura uh, wanted to be killed, he didn't give up making an attempt to try to kill Indra. And you see, he's quite... Uh, determined in his uh, endeavor, in his fight with Indra, he's trying to kill Indra. And he threw his uh, trident at him. But, of course, Indra has got his thunderbolt weapon. King Indra, unafraid, cut it to pieces with his thunderbolt. Simultaneously, he cut off one of Vritasura's arms. Oh, so, so this is where he, he, so I was thinking it was in the previous chapter, but in the previous chapter he hadn't, he still had two arms. But now one of the arms has been cut off and uh, it's described how his, his arm was as thick as the, the body of Vashuki, the king of the serpents. So he could understand, you know, he, he had this really thick, heavy arm. So this was the first uh, successful attempt of Indra to kill Vritasura. He didn't actually kill Vritasura, but he cut off his arms. So Vritasura angrily approaches Indra and struck him on the jaw with the iron mace. And he struck the elephant, Indra's elephant also. And Indra dropped the thunderbolt from his hand. Oh, so I was describing these incidents. They're both in this, in this chapter. I thought they were in the previous chapter. All right, so the... the the attempts of Indra and Vritasura to kill each other is being described. So Vritasura got one arm cut off and then he fights back and he knocks back. He knocks. What happened again? It was described. He, he, with his iron mace, he struck Indra on the jaw, and at the same time he struck the elephant, Airavrata, and Indra dropped a thunderbolt from his hands. All right? So when he dropped the thunderbolt, the demigods in heaven, they were appreciating Vritasura's uh, strength and his power in fighting. And when they, when they saw Indra drop the thunderbolt, then they were worried for his life. And they were saying, alas. So then text six, having dropped the thunderbolt from his hands in the presence of the enemy, Indra was practically defeated and was very much ashamed. He dared not pick up his weapon again. Vitrasura, however, encouraged him, saying, Take up your thunderbolt and kill, some, kill your enemy. This is not the time to lament your fate. So these are the, this is the wonderful quality of Vritasura. How he doesn't want to take any unfair advantage over Indra and their fighting. So he's exhibiting the very nice qualities of a 
Kshatriya who fights according to the codes of Dharma, that you should fight on equal levels. He wants Indra to be armed. Even though Vritasura has lost one of his arms, still he, he wants Indra should have his thunderbolt weapon. All right, and then text number seven, we hear about Indra. Or Avritasura is speaking to Indra and he's encouraging Indra. He's teaching him the philosophy of which a, a, someone fighting should have. Or not only someone fighting, anybody acting on behalf of the Lord. What should be their mood in performing their activities? And he explains it, being dependent and being obliged to accept material bodies, beleaguerant subordinates are sometimes victorious and sometimes defeated. Why? Because we should understand the personality of Godhead is the cause of everything. He is the cause of creation, maintenance and annihilation. And he is the cause of victory and defeat. And we will see this, you can see here in the purport of text number 7, Prabhupada is giving different evidences from particularly Bhagavad Gita, how we should perform a duty and don't be attached to the result. Don't think you can always be victorious. But what is important is to do your duty. Everyone should work on behalf of the Lord. Don't be attached to the result. Perform your duty with detachment. And Prabhupada quotes Bhagavad Gita uh, eight to, uh, or 327 Prakriti Kriya Manani, right, that verse. And then he also speaks about uh, Bhagavad Gita uh, there's a verse, karmani evadikarasti, right, that you should do your duty without being attached to the result. That's quoted also there in the purport. Perform your duty, don't be attached to the result. So like that, there are many verses about karma yoga in the Bhagavad Gita. And this point is being explained here by Vritasura. He was encouraging Indra. Don't be attached to the results. Just be attached to working on behalf of the Lord and offer the results of your work for His pleasure. That is the real mood which you should have. So, victory or defeat, that's not in our hands. You may be the better fighter, but you may not be victorious. So victory and defeat, that is, the results are given by the Lord. Don't be attached. That's important. Only, our only duty is to work sincerely so that our activities may be recognized by Krishna. Yeah, Prabhupada goes on there at the end of the purport. He describes what should be the mentality of a devotee in Krishna consciousness. Right? He said, Prabhupada writes there at the end of the purple, this verse is very instructive for sincere workers in the Krishna consciousness movement. We should not be jubilant in victory or morose in defeat. We should make a sincere effort to implement the will of Krishna or Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we should not be, uh, we should not be concerned with victory or defeat. Our only duty is to work sincerely so that our activities may be recognized by Krishna. So this is the mood which a devotee in Krishna consciousness should have. The results of the work are not in our hands, but we make a sincere effort to try to do something which is pleasing to Krishna, to give pleasure to Krishna. So Vritasura is speaking in that kind of manner to Indra. He's telling Indra, 
you know, victory. You dropped the thunderbolt. Okay, you know, I've injured you and I've injured Ayurveda. Don't cry about it. Go on, you've got to do your duty. You have to go on and fight. And he continues speaking in this way for several verses. Right? Text number eight. All living beings in all the planets of this universe, including the presiding deities of the planets, are fully under the control of the Lord. They work like birds caught they work like birds caught in a net who cannot move independently. <laughs> so this example was given. So even the presiding deities of the planets are under the control of the war. They're also like birds in the net, even though they may have a big position in the planet. So it's an interesting Interesting explanation. Prabhupada writes in the purport, the difference between the suras and the asuras is that the suras know that nothing can happen without the desire of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Whereas the asuras cannot understand the supreme will of the Lord. It's a very clear distinction. Right? The, 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 sura, the, the, the suras, meaning the demigods and the devotees, they know that everything is a desire of the Lord. But the demons, they cannot understand this. They are thinking everything is there by their efforts. They think they can be independent of the Lord. So the demons are always fighting with the asuras or the demigods. So devotees have to learn, we have to remember everything the con under the control of the Lord. We just simply have to depend on Him. And at the same time do our work, make an effort. It's not that we can just sit back, just like Krishna told Arjuna to fight. Krishna didn't fight for Arjuna. Arjuna had to fight himself. And at the end of the purport, Prabhupada said, whether we are defeated or victorious, the Supreme Lord is always victorious because everyone acts under his direction. So these are important points to remember in the course of our everyday activities. Wherever there is Krishna and Arjuna, there is victory, morality, extraordinary power and opulence. So we just have to have that faith and work under his direction. It may take some time before we actually see the result and see the victory, but we should not be discouraged. And then text number nine, Vritasura is continuing speaking, preaching to Indra. He's saying everything is under the, is all subject to the superintendence of the Supreme Lord. Not knowing this, foolish people think the dull material body to be the cause of their activities. And then text 10 continues talking about the wooden doll that looks like a woman. Just like they will make these dolls and they'll make them out of grass or leaves or wood. So they cannot move unless, they're, they're, unless some uh, puppeteer is there to pull the strings, to make them dance. So it, it depends on the person who's handling it. The doll can dance if somebody's handling it nicely. They can make the doll dance by pulling the, 
different strings which are attached to the limbs of the doll. So in the same way, we are like that. We are all under the control of the Supreme Lord. And Prabhupada's prayer, when Prabhupada went to America, he wrote about, he said, Oh Lord, now make me dance, make me dance, make me dance. All right, Prabhupada was comparing himself to the puppet in the hands of the Supreme Lord. And he was praying to the Lord, make me dance. So this is the mood of the devotee. And this same point, the verse is stated there from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Ekala Ishwara Krishna Arsa Brija. Yari Yaichi Nachaya Se Se What is it? Se Se Kari Nishya Teche Teche Kari Nishya Oh, Se Se Teche Kari Nishya Thank you, Prabhu. Yes, right. So, Krishna is the Supreme Controller, everyone else is his servant. So they dance as he makes them dance. Oh, we're all servants of Krishna. We have no independence and we just dance according to the desire of Krishna. And then Prabhupada quotes the other well-known verse from the Brahma Samhita that Krishna is the supreme controller. Okay. And then goes on, talks about the three Purusha avatars and the material, e material nature, different elements of the material nature, 24 elements. So, uh, Vritasura is describing, he's saying that uh, all of these things, the material elements, the senses, the mind, the intelligence, consciousness, it cannot create the material manifestation without the direction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It's not just get, get all the elements for the creation. It's not just getting the elements together, but you need the Supreme Lord there to make it happen. And it's only when the Lord is present, then the material creation comes into effect. At the end of the purport, Prabhupada said, Therefore, when a living entity becomes proud of being an independent Ishwara or God, that is his foolishness. Such foolishness is described in the following verse. Right? This idea, this foolishness that we're the supreme controller. And in this next verse, the, this text number 12, it describes about the difference between devotee and the karma mimamsa. So the karma mimamsa teaching, this is coming from Jaimini. And we see in Krishna Lila, sometimes Krishna would even speak about karma mimamsa himself. He would say to his father, no, everything happens by karma, Every, karma is the cause of everything. <laughs> in this way, Lord Krishna was telling Nanda Maharaj, no need to worship Indra. You don't have to do the Indra Yagya, just depend on karma and everything will happen. But of course, it's not like that. And we don't accept the karma mimamsa teaching either. So here in this purport, Prabhupada describes the difference between the Vaishnava thinking and those who follow the karma mimamsa philosophy. So those who follow the karma mimamsa philosophy, they're thinking karma is supreme and everything happens as the results of karma. But a devotee, understands that everything is under the control of the Supreme Lord and it happens by the grace of the Supreme Lord. It's not just simply karma which is supreme. A person may have good karma but still things may go very badly for him. So devotee simply depends on the Lord. Good karma or bad karma are given by the Lord. 
and the results will come also by the grace of the Lord. We say, Mare Krishna Rake Ke, Rake Krishna Mare Ke. If Krishna wants to kill someone, nobody can save him. If Krishna wants someone to live, no one can kill him. We don't say karma is the cause of everything. We say Krishna is the cause of everything. And Krishna is superior. Krishna is over karma. So this is the, the main point which is described here in this verse. Okay? I've highlighted a couple of portions in the verse. I'll just read. According to the conclusion of the philosophy known as karma mimamsa, one's karma or previous fruit of activity is the cause of everything. And therefore, there's no need to work. <laughs> no need to work. We just sit back and wait for everything to happen, right? If everything is just karma, just sit back and wait for everything to happen. No, you have to work. Krishna tells Arjuna, remember me and fight. He doesn't tell Arjuna, just sit back and it will all happen. And at the end of the purport, therefore, the Supreme Lord is the original cause of one's of one's birth. Similarly, the Supreme Lord is the cause of one's being killed. No one is independent. Everyone is dependent. The true, the true conclusion is that the only independent person is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The only independent person. And that, that is stated in the very first verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Janmajasya yatonavayat etirastis chaktishu abhigyanaswarat. Abhigyanaswarat. That he knows everything and he's fully swarat, he's fully independent. He alone is supremely independent. Our independence is very small. We have some independence. Our independence is to choose between Krishna and Maya. But Krishna has supreme independence. So this point is being made there in text 12. Karma Mimamsa. <laughs> Any other examples of karma mimamsa you can think of? You mean like Krishna when he was preaching to Nanda Maharaj? He was also preaching karma mimamsa? Yeah, I mentioned that one. I mentioned that Krishna preaching to Nanda Maharaj, Krishna was using the Karma Mimamsa philosophy to convince Nanda Maharaj not to worship Indra. Is there any other example, so, of Karma Mimamsa you've come across? Okay. Not too much. Yeah? I don't know any others. Do you know? Can't think of any. Anyway, Karma Mimamsa is coming from Jaimini. It's one of the Sat Darshans, one of the six philosophies. But it's not the supreme philosophy, right? Over everything we accept Vedanta philosophy. The teachings of Vyasa David superior to the teachings of these other sages. But it's one of the one of the six darshans. Maharaj, uh, Prahlad Maharaj says to his uh, friends that Sukhama Indriyankam Daitya Deha Jogena Dehina Sarvatri Labhyata Daiva Jatha Dukha Majatnata. By our active activities, we get uh, 
um, happiness and also misery. Would no one wants misery, but it comes. Similarly, even if one doesn't try for happiness, it will come. That is the lesson of uh, Prahlad Maharaj to his uh, friends in seventh canto, sixth chapter. Yeah, well, that's that's similar to like Tashiya Vaheto Prayate Kovido, right? Right, this is the fifth chapter of the uh, first canto. Narad Muni says to Vyasadeva. Yeah. You, see, you don't have to endeavor for happiness. It will come on its own accord. If you're, the, nobody's endeavoring for distress, but it comes anyway. And the same way happiness will also come. So that same point is said by Prahlad Maharaj, is it? Yes, Maharaj. And that's in seventh canto. Yes, Naraj. Okay, which chapter? Sixth chapter. Sixth chapter, okay. Yes, Naraj. Thank you. So, that, yes, this is the idea of uh, detached work. So, Vritasura is encouraged. This is karma yoga, of course. Karma yoga means working with detachment. Performing your duty but not being attached to the result. And so Vritasura, he, he's encouraging Indra, you know, do your duty. Don't be attached to the result. So verse number 13 continues. It, uh, Rita Sura talks about give, the, the, you're not inclined to die, but still people die. Just because you're not, you don't want to die doesn't mean you won't die. Everything depends on the will of the Lord. And the same way victory and defeat depend on Him also. It's not just simply our own desire. And Prabhupada writes about how in the purport about people may be very proud of their material possessions. He said it's not good to be puffed up about having any, about possessing things. And people think, by my efforts, by my intelligence, by my hard work, I have acquired so much wealth, or I have got such a big position in the society, and I'm so successful in my material endeavors. Don't be proud of all of these things, because they can be taken away from you at any time. They're all very temporary. So we should understand that. There's no reason to be proud of anything. Nobody wants to die and nobody wants to be poor. Nobody wants to be ugly. But everybody, everyone's put into these different positions at some time or another. We're put into these different situations just to help us to detach from all of these things and understand that we're not the body and all of these things are temporary. So here you see Vritasura in the body of the demon. And so definitely he's become, becoming detached from his material situation. I we gave the example last week about Gajendra in the body of the elephant. And you're in the body of an elephant, you have to be really detached from the body. Oh my goodness, to be in that body. We see that we have two elephants here in Mayapur and I see them in their bodies. Oh my goodness, it must be so painful living in that big body. And they have to go to walk around with this big body, they have to eat the leaves and the bark from the trees. Not an easy thing to be in those, in the material body. So we're fortunate to have the human body. 
difficult in the elephant body to realize the Supreme Lord. We have to take advantage of this human birth, you use it to get out of the material world. Just think if you have to come back again, become an elephant or a dog or something or a tree, how painful it must be to be in, those, in one of those bodies. Okay, so Prabhupada writes at the end of the purport there, text 13, Therefore, either in opulence or in distress, we are not independent. Everything is dependent on the sweet will of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We, all, we have to become dependent on His will. And at the same time, we have to work. We have to work for his pleasure, offering the results of our work for him. Don't be attached to temporary material possessions. Any time they can all be taken from us. And so text 30. 13, 14 goes on like that. One should be equipoised in fame and defamation, victory and defeat, life and death. In these effects, represented as happiness and distress, one should maintain oneself in equilibrium without anxiety. So this is important. Don't get too much caught up with the material situations. Be transcendental to all of these different positions. Just understand ourself as a servant of Krishna. And everything which happens, it's his arrangement. He is the doer. We are just simply the puppets in his hands. So we have to surrender. Vrita Sura is explaining all of these things to Indra, describing so many nice examples. Right? At the end of the purport, Prabhupada says, instead of being attached and worried about everything and being in so much anxiety, we should receive everything as the mercy of the Lord, and remain steady in all circumstances. And we have the we have the the Hare Krishna mantra to chant. Just by taking shelter of the holy name, then we can achieve that condition. We can become uh, steady in all different circumstances. We have to go on. We have to just simply remain focused in our position as a servant of Krishna. So that, the, of course, that is vaya vasayatmika buddhi, that we're focused, our concentration is simply on the Supreme Lord. So someone may, may say, I'm not on that level. Okay, we're not, we're not all on that level. But we can come to that level gradually, and how do we do it? Simply by chanting. But what good, it doesn't do you any good to get all anxious and caught up and worried about everything. You're not going to do any good for yourself like that. But if you chant Hare Krishna and take shelter of the Holy Name, then you can transcend the material situation. So don't be attached to the success and don't be depressed by the failure. Just understand we're servants of Krishna. Go on, do our duty. And Indra is giving himself as an example. He says here, he says, I am trying my best to fight. I am not at all morose, even under such adverse conditions. Therefore, you should give up your moroseness and continue fighting. Hmm. 
He said, hey, you have already overwhelmed me, but nonetheless, with a desire to kill you, I am trying my best to fight. <laughs> Vritasura already lost his arm. You've already defeated my weapon, my arm have been cut to pieces. But still Vritasura is he's not depressed, he's not worried about it. Okay, you know, go on and fight, just keep trying. Mm. So Vritasura was such a great devotee and he was strong, strong as a spiritual master. He, he was acting as the spiritual master of Indra. Although Vritasura was on the verge of defeat, but he is like the guru to Indra. He's giving him good instruction. Hmm. So one should perform his duty under all circumstances, even though one may know what the result will be. So you may know you, you, you're not going to be successful, like Vritasura knew he was going to be killed, but he didn't give up, he kept, you just fight, you know, do it, try, you try your best and depend on Krishna for the result. What's important is you make the attempt. And we see Lord Nityananda going to preach to Jagai and Madhai. And at the first attempt, he was not successful. Lord Nityananda and Haridas had to run from Jagai and Madhai. But they didn't give up, he came back again. So that, that is the determination of the devotee. And Prabhupada also, Prabhupada was trying to preach. He'd gone to Jansi. He went to Jansi, he tried to begin a temple there, to make a center there, and there was some interest, but then it all collapsed. Oh, okay, he didn't give up. He went somewhere else to preach. Okay, now is not the time for Jansi. He went off to America. <laughs> Instead of, you know, after trying to preach in Jansi, he went off to America and tried to preach in New York. So, he just depend on Krishna for the result. Do what you can and see what the results are. And then uh, Vritasura's final example, text number 17, is the last verse of uh, Vritasura's instructions to Indra. He's talking about the, a gambling match. He said, my enemy can sit he said, oh my enemy, he's talking to Indra, consider this battle a gambling match in which one lives, in which, one, in which our lives are the stakes. The arrows are the dice and the animals acting as carriers are the game board. <laughs> the, the animals acting as carriers. I mean, oh, like Airavrata is the carrier of Indra, he's so like the game board. So no one can understand who will be defeated and who will be victorious. It all depends on providence. And providence means it's under the control of Krishna. Hmm. So like that. So this was Vritasura's instructions to Indra. Hmm. Text 18 continues. Hearing the straightforward words of Ritasura, Indra praised him and again took up the thunderbolt. And <laughs> he then smiled and smoked, he spoke to Vritasura. So Indra is not afraid, he's been listening. And of course, he's seen his thunderbolt is very powerful, it could cut off one arm of Ritasura. So Indra has got some confidence. But even then he's bewildered that this Vritasura is such a devotee, but he's in the body of a demon. So it's troubling, a bit troubling for Indra to think about this. So Prabhupada writes in the purport, even so-called demons sometimes take, uh, sometimes have exalted devotion for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore Indra 
smiled uh, reassuringly at Vritasura. Well, we see, of course, Prahlad Maharaj, Bali Maharaj, they are the obvious born in demon families. And then you have Gajendra. Gajendra is actually Indra Jumna, who was cursed to become an elephant. And you have uh, some other examples. Who, what else do you have? Well, you have, uh, you got even Indra got cursed by his guru to become a pig, right? He was put in the body of a pig. So you get these different situations. You don't know who these different personalities are. Although the body may be demon, but you don't know. They can, they can be great devotees. And, and Indra recognizes that, text 19, he says, I see by your devotion, I, I see you by your discrimination and endurance in devotional service. Another, he's very resolute, right? Vaya vasayatmika buddhi ekeha kurananda. Those who are on this path are resolute in determination. So we see this kind of determination in Vritasura. So Indra said, you are, you're a perfect devotee of the Lord. But still, you're in this body, in this demon body. <laughs> Just to read the last part of the purport there, Indra was surprised to see that Vritasura was undisturbed. He was fixed in devotional service to the Lord. For such a mentality is impossible for a demon. However, by the grace of the personality of Godhead, anyone can become an exalted devotee. Striyo Vaishyas Tata Sudras Tepi Parangatim an unalloyed devotee is sure to return home back to Godhead. All right, so Indra is appreciating the devotion in Vritasura. You've, he, and he, he, he said, you've given up the demonic mentality and it attained the position of a great devotee. Now, how did he do that? How did Vritas, how was Vritasura able to do that? Of course, he he had association. He got association, and Prabhupada. You can see in text number twenty, Prabhupada quotes this famous verse from Second Canto, Kirita Hunanda Pulinda Pukisha, that anybody who gets the association, Prabhavishna Venamaha. Then they can become devotees. If they take shelter of the devotee of the Lord, they can become devotee. So anyone who, anyone can be purified if he takes shelter of a pure devotee and makes his character according to the pure devotee's direction. Hmm? Then even if, even if one is Kirita, Andra, Palinda or whatever, he can be purified and elevated to the position of a Mahapurushaya. Mahapurushaya. So this was Vritasura. Vritasura, of course, had association. And we'll be hearing about that in the future as we go on to hear about Chitra Ketu. We'll hear about Vritasura and how in the previous life he was Chitra Ketu and he had a lot of association with very great devotees like Narada Muni. So Indra is just expressing his astonishment that he, that Vritasura, although he has such a such a terrible body, such a disgusting body is a demon, but he's so devoted. He has this wonderful devotion for the Lord. And <laughs> there's a nice example given in text 20, uh, 22 there. Uh, you, we should note that. He talks about what is the use of water in small ditches? <laughs> the water in small ditches. 
If someone is a devotee of the Lord, then he can achieve everything. The one who is a devotee of the Lord, they, he, they achieve the highest auspiciousness and they swim in the ocean of nectar. What is the use of water in small ditches? You want, you want to swim? You're not going to go in the water in a ditch. There's no pleasure in swimming in a ditch. Go in the ocean, an ocean of nectar. So that is devotional service. All right, and so then, then we hear about the fight. We hear about how Vritatura was, he threw his iron club at Indra. He had only one hand, so he had to use his left hand to throw the club. But Indra smashed the club to pieces and at the same time he cut off the other arm of Vritasura. Right? Cut off Vritasura's other arm and then after that it's, it's described Vritasura is like a flying mountain whose wings have been cut to pieces. Sometimes, in some places you can see mountains like that. You'll see some mountains. I know some places they have, in, in China they have places like that, mountains. They, like, all around the mountain is perfectly flat and they're growing rice and somehow there's this mountain there. Just how the, how the mountain got there in the middle of the field, it's surprising. And so it's like that. And it said Vrita Sura was like a mountain with no, like someone whose wings had been cut off. And then when we hear about Vrita Sura getting, making his body huge and swallowing Indra, and then the demigods are worried, oh, that Indra's been swallowed, oh no, what's going to happen now? Indra's swallowed into the body of Vrita Sura. So, of course, Indra was swallowed, but because he has his uh, Narayana Kavacha and he has his um, thunderbolt weapon, he didn't die, even though he's in the body of Vritasura. So Vritasura swallowed Indra, and after he swallowed Indra, then he sat down in meditation. And he sat down in meditation, and at that time Indra then used his thunderbolt weapon and cut his way out of the stomach of Vritasura. And then once he came out of the body of Vritasura, then he cut off the head of Vritasura. But we're told it took 360 days for him to cut off the head of Vritasura. And after 360 days, his head fell to the ground. And then all the demigods uh, throw flowers and And the spark, the spark came out from the body of Vritasura and went back home, back to Godhead. And went back to become an associate of Lord Sankarshyan. So all the demigods were praising Indra and showered flowers on Indra. They were very happy, oh, this demon's been killed, he's been disturbing the universe. Now it's all over. All right, so Vritasura has been killed and Indra is acclaimed as the winner. Who actually won? Of course, Vritasura won because Vritasura got to go back to Godhead and Indra had to remain in the material world. Just like in Gajendra Moksha, Gajendra complained, you killed the crocodile. I called, I, I offered the prayers, the crocodile never offered any prayers. You killed the crocodile, he got out of his body, I'm still in my dumb elephant body. You should have liberated me. So Indra is remaining in the material world, he wanted to remain, he wanted the material body, he wanted to be king of heaven, he wanted to keep that position, so he did. 
All right. So someone has their hand up. You have a question, Prabhu? Yes, Maharaj. That uh, 360 days, that is in the standard of heaven or uh, our earth? 360 days. Oh, but not told. I don't know. What does it say? It says, uh, the time in which the sun, moon and other illuminaries complete a northern and southern journey. So in the solar calendar, 360 days. I think it's earthly time. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. All right. Okay, yes, any other question? We'll take a break for 10 minutes. Okay, and we'll be back and we'll go on to chapter 12. We'll hear about Indra's sinful reactions. Hare Krishna.